Welcome to Watch Chat, where we chat about watches and other facts of life. Tudor, you've done it again. Hi. <sighs> To mark the 70th anniversary of the British North Greenland expedition, this is the new Tudor Ranger, a 2022 novelty. And I got nothing good to say about this watch. If you have been following my channel, you probably think that I have an irksome feeling towards the brand due to my recent unfavorable response towards their releases. Let me assure you that I am not biased against Tudor as I have given a few glowing reviews on some of their timepieces. Unfortunately, this is not one of them. Don't believe me? Check out the links below on all the Tudor watches I have reviewed, and you see that my views are simply my honest opinion. Now that I've gotten that out of the way, let's talk about the watch. According to Tudor, Hans Rudolf registered the Ranger name in the year 1929, which is three years after the name Tudor was registered. Since then, the name was not used to indicate a specific model but instead used to add an adventurous touch to certain Tudor watches. It was only in the year 1965, Tudor cast its first Ranger design standard, with the Arabic luminescence numerals at 3, 6, 9 and 12 on a black dial with the arrow hour hand. Over the years, the Ranger design has evolved into many variations. Fast forward to the year 2022, we now have this particular Ranger, the M79950-0001. The Ranger has a close to perfect case size of 39mm in diameter and 12mm in thickness. The entire case construct is made out of stainless steel and are all brush finish. Even the bevel at the side and the bezel are also brushed. There are no elements of blink or shine here, save for the little rays of the bezel making it indisputably a two watch. Yet, there is no crown guards for that huge screw-in crown, which has the Tudor rose engraved. The shape of the lugs and case here are similar to those of the Black Bay 58. There are no holes on the lugs. The bracelet here however is definitely not that of the Black Bay 58. It is a 3-piece link bracelet that are all brushed. There are no rivets on the side and the sides are all brushed as well. Like I said, not like the BB58. There are screw pins here and a T-fit safety catch for easy adjustment. The clasp here is a folding clasp. Powering under the closed case back is the in-house automatic MT5402 caliber which has a 27 juice, 28,800 VPH, 70 hours of power reserve and is cost certified. Underneath the dome shaped sapphire crystal is a matte black dial with an off white printing on it. Is it me? Or is the so printing of the word Ranger on the dial kind of make it look a little barren? I mean, even the black base ceramic has a two line printing at the bottom. To me, unlike Moser, the ample amount of space isn't a good look on this watch. Then there is that questionable use of the numerical form. Whilst the 6 doesn't look unnormal, the 9 on the other hand is an upside down of the 6. It looks more like a alphabet G than a 9. Rather abnormal if you ask me. There is also the inconsistent font size at the 12 o'clock. If you look closely, the 1 seems taller than the 2. This also occurred in the Mont Blanc IC Diver. If you've missed my review of that watch, do check out the link in the description below. The markers on the Ranger are cutouts of loom material without any steel frame. Whilst the cutout of the loom looks cool, the lack of frame and the ample empty space on the dial does cheapen the look of the watch a little. The hands on the watch all have looms too including the second hand, which has a red tip. Although the hands are polished finish, I find the polishing on them to be rather mediocre. I'm not the biggest fan of that arrow head shape our hand. To me, it looked more like this instead. LOL. 
the machine finishing, the lack of shine, the poor choice of font numerals, the cheapened design on this watch has a retail price that isn't too far off from the Black Bay 58. This really makes me wonder if anyone would really consider this watch instead of the Black Bay 58, which arguably has a better design, a sportier feel, a rotating bezel, a 200 meter of water resistance instead of only a hundred on the Ranger, and yet the Black Bay 58 is still 0.1 mm thinner than the Ranger. For the first time, I must say that the bracelet on this piece is better looking than the watch. This, however, are my own personal opinion. Don't take my word for it, go check out the watch yourself and let me know what your thoughts are. What do you think? Would you have opted for the Ranger over the BB58? Let us know in the comments below. If I'm entirely frank about this, I'm a little concerned as to the direction Tudor is heading. It all feels a little, hmm, lazy. Recently, its competitors had a few innovative and creative designs that are really appealing to the masses. Tudor would really need to up their game, especially when they did so well with their BB58 line. Come on Tudor, we know you can do it. Anyway, if you like this kind of video, please like, share, comment, subscribe and hit that notification icon to support me and I'll really appreciate it and promise to upload more videos like this. Until the next one, thank you for watching.